Hello and thank you for clicking on my video. My channel is Rumble Canada. I'm going to show you how I converted the Crossman DPMS SBR into a Crossman DPMS LBR. Now I've got my prototype on the bench here. We're going to take this one apart and we're going to take the barrel out of this one and we're going to go void the warranty on a brand spanking new R1 and we're going to put this barrel in place of it. So let's start taking apart my prototype here. I've got an electronic solenoid in this one. It's pretty cool. It works really good. 50 volts. Go check out my other video because I just posted a video on this one. Um, and I've got lots of videos coming for this particular one with the 50 volt. So go check that out. So let's take this thing apart and see how I modified this. It's actually a very simple mod. All you have to do is source a barrel. I'm going to show you where to get the barrel from. Um, and this one here, I believe, the, now the stock barrel on the Crossman DPMS is, I believe, 9 and 5 eighths. Nine and a half, maybe, um, where this one is 20 and a quarter. It's actually, and you can get this barrel from the Crossman Repeater 1077. This one was on sale here in Canada for about 90 bucks, I think. Um, I tested it, didn't like it, it jammed up a few times. And when I pulled the mag out and flipped it over, I realized it was the same barrel as this one. This one here is from the Crossman Vigilante. You might have seen this in my other video where you can put the barrel extension mod on, which works really good, by the way. Um, but it was the same barrel, but just longer. So that was it. I didn't like this one, so I took it apart. So I've got a bunch of other parts for extra projects. Sometimes I buy a bunch of different rifles just for the parts themselves. Like the tube inside here I can use, the trigger, this plat, you know, your whole stock piece that holds in place. I can make some pretty cool stuff out of this and I have a bunch of extra parts. So if, even though the rifle was inexpensive, um, wasn't very good, I still get a bunch of extra parts that I can make something else out of. Funny story, um, I thought that I had enough barrel here to make two barrels when I cut it in half. And what happened was while I was testing it and putting the barrel together, I was trying to put this in place here so it would screw in and just give it a little bit more rigidness to make this a little bit more sturdy and so it wouldn't flex at all. And um, I didn't realize when I was knocking this onto the barrel to put on here, I knocked the barrel in about a quarter, about a half an inch, right to here actually. And um, so I thought, oh, I have lots of room here for this barrel. No, <laughs> um, after I cut it, I realized when I went to put the magazine back in that the barrel was in here like this. So. That was a fail and um, when I moved the barrel back out, this was too short. So it actually looks pretty wicked in the end anyways. But this is still in production, still you know being worked on, but I'll quickly show you how to convert it to a long barrel. So let's start taking this apart. Now, before I take this apart here, I wanna also talk about these uh, magazines. These magazines are garbage. There's lots of problems with them, especially the 300. Uh, magazine the 300 BB magazine here has so many problems and I'm going to show you where one of the problems are on mine if you look in there on this side here you'll notice where the co2 canister goes in it's cracked so that was one of the problems why mine was leaking so you know what I'm going to do with these two magazines here I'm going to take them completely apart this one here I have a part a little bit I just don't want to show you yet until I get into them but I'm going to completely take these apart, redesign these, and make something. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out why these leak and why these ones suck. This one here, I'm going to modify it and see if I can get this up to maybe um, 30 BBs, 40 BBs. So we'll see what happens with that. But this one here definitely has to come apart. I'll fully, completely take this one apart. And we're going to see how this one works and why this one sucks so bad. So watch out for that video because I'll be posting this video sometime soon too as well. I got to modify the valve in one of these magazines anyways because this one here no longer needs blowback. So let's put those over there. Okay, so let's get this thing apart. It's very simple to take this thing apart. And then I'm just going to cut this tape that's holding my batteries in place. I don't have any scissors with me, but this will work. Okay. All right, so we're pretty much apart. This actually comes apart pretty easy now. There we go. Now this should actually just come out just like that. It's pretty easy how uh, this comes apart. 
Okay, so now that we've got this apart, I'm actually going to take and take off the other screws here as well to make it a little bit easier. Now, I don't have all the side rails on because I'm tuning and testing and modding the heck out of these things. Testing, tuning, and modding. That's what it's all about. It's having fun. Turning your stock rifles and BB pistols into something cool that no one else has. And that's what I like about these. So I'm going to take this off. Now I've just got this held in place with some tape that seems to be very strong at the moment. Ooh, that's on there pretty dang good. Hold on a sec. I'm using hockey tape, by the way. Okay, I've got it apart there. So this here is just off my one of my superchargers. It actually looks really cool and suits the project perfectly. So you can see I've just got some hockey tape on here. So I'm just going to pull this off now, this tube. Um, I've also used an O-ring. That O-ring is off a car injector. I probably have to... Oh, no, there we go. All right, we are apart. So you can see I've used a couple O-rings in there. Now i got to take this tape off. Jeez. Okay, so I've got all the tape off. You can see this end here has got a little notch in it. Um, I use that for the muzzle part of it. So we are all apart here. Let's take our last couple pieces off. Let's get these O-rings out. Take this off. Okay, so we're down to the last little pieces here. So you can see um, this sits in here like this. This is what holds your barrel in place. Yeah, I don't have my stock barrel with me, but it's a very thin little barrel. And you might have seen it in one of my other videos. So check out my other videos for it. But, so all you have to do is machine this out a little bit bigger by using just a drill bit in here. Might be able to see it in there. But basically, you're just going to drill a little bit right here. That's all that's needed to get your barrel in place. Best thing to do is, is make this part tight. So whatever drill bit you're going to use, make sure this slides in nice and tight so it doesn't flex inside here. Now, let's get to this part here. This is a very, very easy mod, guys. I'll show you here. Okay, so we've got our four screws loosened. Let's have a look on the inside here. Okay, so this should now come apart. All four screws just came out. Don't want to lose those. Usually what I like to do is have a little magnet there to hold them in place so they don't roll off. Now that we're all apart here, look inside here. No machining was needed inside this piece at all. All you have to do is, now I'm just going to take this rubber piece off. This you will actually have to hole out a little bit. So what I did was I just put a drill bit inside here and just kept uh, removing the rubber as I was spinning the drill. And that got rid of most of the rubber that was needed for this to fit back into place like that. So that ended up working out perfectly. Now, the reason why I put the C-clips in here was because, like I said earlier, when the barrel moved forward, when I was putting on... Now, when the barrel moved forward on me, this piece here I was trying to knock in. And what ended up happening was I didn't put the C-clip in and it moved forward like this. So the first C-clip was used and it worked good but then I realized if I didn't want this thing moving at all inside here it was best to put two E or C clips whatever you want to call them and that was what I put in place there now I'll pop these off for you now all I did was machine these little grooves inside here not sure if you can see that but I machined those and the easiest way to do this was to take a drill Put it inside here like this. Wait. Whoops. Okay, let's get that in there. I just put the barrel inside the drill, spun it like this, and then used a file to file down my grooves. So I just basically held it like this. You can see it's moving. I filed down the grooves, and that's what I was left with, those perfect little grooves. So I'm going to measure that out for you so you can see how much groove space you need. So I just kept machining it down. Now, you don't need to take it down much, probably about a millimeter, maybe. These C-clips fit perfectly like this after you're done. 
So I'm going to also show you, let's get some measurements. So our barrel diameter is about, let's see here, about 0.3 inches or in millimeters, we're looking at about 8 mil, 7.95 millimeters. So maybe center to the groove, I'm looking at about 0.833 or 21.16. But you can measure that in here and you can play around with the difference when you machine your barrel. And then um, if you measure this part out here, you're basically looking at about 4.74, maybe 4.75. So that's what your groove so that's what the groove is inside here. And there you go. So once you've done that, you can see inside here like this. I'm gonna put my clips back in place. That's it. So I just clip them back into place. There's my clips. I might have to turn them when you put it back in here like this, but see, nice fit. Now we put our rubber piece back on. Our rubber's all good. The rubber grommet or rubber piece is back in place. We're all sealed up. You can see inside there. I'm not sure if you can see the barrel in there. Like I said, very, very easy mod. So let's put this back together. Make sure that you've put the right rubber side on. See, you'll get a nice close. There'll be no gap once you put it all back together. Now you can see it's rocking a bit. So what I did was, you just have to turn your C clips around a little bit. Okay, so everything's fit. No machining on this part itself. Everything fits nice. Let's put the screws back in place and then put the barrel back in and void the warranty on our R1. So what I also like to do is just set the screws into place, um, not over tightening one at a time, just kind of doing the crisscross part of it. Not You don't want to tighten one side first. What you want to do is just tighten, come on, just tighten them down like this. Okay, so everything's tightened back up nicely. Our barrel is not going to move now. So we're all put back together. We're going to slide it back into our tube. Let's slide it back in here. And now we're ready to put this back into our R1. So let's go and take that apart. All right, guys, so I've got my brand spanking new R1 here. So let's take it out of the box. With our new magazine as well. Let's take this off the bench here for a second. All right, so I've taken the other one out of the box and I've got my other SBR here. And I just want to compare the two for you quickly. Now, the R1 is basically the SBR, so if you don't know which one you want to buy, the only real difference is just the stock piece here. I get it. This one feels nicer on the chin, where this one doesn't have that nice little rest here. Um, but they're basically the same, same kind of chassis piece here. The only difference is you can't swap the um, stock piece on the R1 to the SBR or vice versa because this piece is a little bit different. But basically all the same. Um, you can see here uh, the muzzle piece is a little different compared to the stock one. The stock one is this one here on the SBR. So it's basically a preference at the piece here. You also don't get this on the R1, which it should have come with. I don't know why they didn't include it. Um, this one, you do pay a, a little bit more of a premium because of the stock. Now, I don't like the stock if you look at the two here. Now, this one, now the stock on the SBR is much better, I think, um, than the R1 because, look at this. It's like the grooves on this would hurt, especially if you weren't wearing a shirt. Like... That's crazy. I don't know why they did that. I don't like this part either because it bounces around. You can see. So I'll have to tighten that up a little bit. Um, I definitely don't like the buttstock here. This really sucks. Especially if you weren't wearing a shirt. This would hurt. So they are all the same magazine. This one here is bone stock. Brand new. Out of the box. And now we're going to go ahead and void the warranty and take this apart. I'm actually going to take this part out first. Just to take this, it'll make it a little bit easier when I take it apart. So I'm just going to move that out. So let's start taking this apart. And we're going to just take out these screws here, this one here, this one here, 
and this side, and this should all come apart right there. Take that and put that there. Bye-bye warranty. Okay, this should come apart. Look at that. There you go, guys. That easy to take this whole piece apart. And there's your little pea shooter. This isn't even bolted in. Look at how thin this thing is. I could bend this. Now with the other long barrel, it's also rifled. Whether that does anything to a BB, it's rifled. This one is not. Um, look at how thin that is. But look at how easy that was to take apart as well. So, we take that out. And now all we have to do is, man, that was really easy. Very easy mod, guys. Check it out. Look at that. We're already loaded back up. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just putting an O-ring back in there. So I just put this on here, just using another O-ring to hold it in place. And I'll just use another one right here to keep that from rattling. These work really good just to keep everything centered. Not much effort. It'll work for now. Just to show you and give you an idea of how easy and how the pieces all can be fit and cut up and put together. So, I mean, I could even put that on there if I wanted to, just to give it a something a little different. Actually, you know, that's what we're gonna do, one sec. And see, to just finish things up, you know what? I'm just going to use this one. So there we go, guys. <laughs> I put that on there. Now look at it. Actually, that looks pretty cool. See all the different things that you can build from all the different parts? <laughs> That's awesome. How's that, guys? R1 sniper rifle. <laughs> Full auto still works. Everything is working. Full auto works through it. I've got a bunch of mods coming, so click that share, like, and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.